ואני. תודה רבה שכולכם באתם. מרחוק ומקרוב, אנחנו מאוד מעריכים את זה. אני אדבר באנגלית. מי שירצה בסוף תרגום, אני אתרגם הכל. אחרי כמה כוסות. מי שירצה תרגום, יתבייש להגיד לך. On behalf of Hannah and myself, I would like to thank you all for coming. Um, I was just thinking I should say on behalf of Central Synagogue and uh, Board of Management, but those days are gone. Um, thank you so much for coming. On a personal note, it's so nice to see so many friendly and loving faces. Faces and people that I take with me, despite me being so geographically challenged, But wherever I do go around the world, I'll, so many of you are with me in my heart. I'm not the best in keeping in touch all the time, but I guarantee you, so many of you are always there. I'd like to first obviously thank you all for coming. Uh, people and close family and friends is what makes the Simcha, so thank you so much. And thank you, first of all, to obviously my mom and dad. Thank you so much yeah. for um, putting such a lovely night on, but also for keeping up with me for 30 years. Uh, it's been uh, quite a long voyage, and also I think I could say it on behalf of Hannah as well. Thank you so much for all the support and encouragement and boundless love that you always bestow on us. And I'm sure I could speak in the name of Hannah, but um, it's, we feel so lucky. And also a special thanks to um, my sister, my loving sister, <laughs> the photographer here, uh, and brought up such a such a lovely night and organized everything. Thank you so much. And for obviously my dear niece and nephew Eli and Geffen. Um, oh, she's in the hammock. The, I couldn't ask for a better niece and nephew. And my other niece, Alma, and my other loving brother and his wife Leah. Thank you so much. We're all so, so happy to be here as well. And again, for all of you, really close family and friends, each one of you um, played I feel played an instrumental role in my life, either close family or close friends in some capacity in some continent that I've been in. And as Hannah says, my, my friends and my family, it's her family and friends, so uh, Hannah appreciates it as well too. Um, just on a, because um, all of you have been asking me how Hannah and I have met and wanted a bit more details. <laughs> and you're wondering why you didn't hear from me for so long. So, in a nutshell, I almost can't believe we're here today. It's been a long voyage. And I've actually, towards the end of my time in Australia, I had a lot of people pressuring me, telling me, you know, we should meet matchmakers to get it going already, and I met quite a few matchmakers, I met even more wannabe matchmakers, but I only met one match, and that was Hannah. And it all happened. <laughs> and it, 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 it was, um, it was all, it all happened in Columbus Circle in Manhattan about a year ago, While the war was raging here, we went to a demonstration for Israel, um, and it was to counter another Palestinian demonstration. And, and I went to most of the demonstrations in Hannah. Um, that uh, Friday afternoon, right before Shabbos, was rushing after her medical school day to get to the demonstration to stand with Israel. And I actually even have a video of us You know, yes. dancing in the same circle, who knew that we would dance many more times after that demonstration. And shortly after the demonstration, we um, kept in touch on the phone for, quite a, for a couple of months, until one night. And this for me was the uh, turning point. One night, I go to buy my kosher chicken in, uh, in uh, 
the Whole Foods on 97th Street, and I, I get a call from Hannah, and you know, there's uh, no reception downstairs in the basement level where the kosher chicken is. So, you know, when Hannah calls, I can't afford to lose reception, so I stayed on the ground level um, where the, uh, you know, non-kosher cheeses are. I know the whole section now by heart, because I spent 45 minutes there, <laughs> walking around in circles, trying to persuade Hannah that this was right, that we should pursue what we deeply felt, that that special chemistry that we had over the phone for a couple months was something that was worth pursuing for something maybe a bit more. And, you know, me being a salesperson, I knew that this was a sale. <laughs> I can't afford to lose the sale. So I, I, I went to, the, um, to, to the, the, the best guide, the best, uh, the best sales selling guide for myself, I think for any person, especially for any Jew, the Torah. And I decided, you know, let me try to get something moving here with an idea behind, you know, what our sages teach us. And we all know that our sages teach us the kashir zivug goshen adam kikirat yamsuf, a zivug, a matchmaking of a person, is as hard as the splitting of the sea. And I said to Hannah, you know, we might not be certain, I have my things, my uncertainties, you have your uncertainties, medical school, but we know from our sages that it's a tough thing. It's a tough thing like the splitting of the sea. And then I told her, but you know that, that our sages don't just leave us alone with saying, oh, it's all just tough. There's a story in the Midrash that <laughs> tells us that the splitting of the sea just, didn't just happen like that. Nachshon ben Aminadav, the head of the tribe of Judah, the Egyptians were in the back, the gushing waters in the ocean was in front of them, it was night, it was dark, it was stormy, and God tells the Israelites, Mati tzakelai, daber Yisrael v'isau, what are you shouting to me? Tell the Israelites to go, move forward, what are you even thinking about? And the Midrash tells us, how did it happen? It didn't just happen because Moses hit the ocean and it just split. Nachshon ben Aminadav went into the gushing waters not knowing what's going to happen. And he didn't just go till his feet got wet, until his leg and his stomach. He went in all the way into the gushing waters not knowing what's going to happen. And only when he was fully covered by stormy ocean waters, that's when the sea split. And I said to Hannah, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. I said to her, yeah, I don't know if you're my Bashar. I obviously had to spin that one off. You know, we, I didn't want to scare her off. But I said, I said to Hannah, you know, we're here. We have to be at the moment. And Ma Mazel in Judaism, if Forrest Gump's mother said, you know, a man creates his own fortune. So Judaism, we have Mazel. Mazel is not just a thing that comes from the heavens. Mazel stands for three things. It's an acronym. The Mem is Makom, you need to be at the right place. Zion is Man, you need to be at the right time. But there's also the Lamed. And it's not just important to be at the right place at the right time, but Lamed is La so to do. You need to be at the right place at the right time and do something about it. And that's how you create your own fortune. And I decided to do something about it that night in Whole Foods. <laughs> and God knows, Hannah liked the, liked the idea, liked the story uh, that our sages echoed to us till today, and it's so pertinent to us. And we found each other, and we started dating, and I feel the luckiest person in the world. Uh. <laughs> and, and we just, um, when we know that sometimes the waters might still be gushing around us, and it might sometimes still be stormy, and the light from the lighthouse is not always seen, but in the end we do know that as we are going, step by step, the ocean is splitting to us, and may it be, to, the ocean should split to each and every one of us, our own ocean with our own difficulties, anyone who needs healing, anyone who needs a good match, every ocean, every sea should split to all of us, and please God, we will rejoice with the rebuilding of the temple in speedy days. And let us say, Amen. 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 Amen.